Good evening, good evening, good evening to all who are on our Wednesday night meeting tonight. I'd like to welcome you once again, and I hope that today's message will be a blessing to each and every one of us here. Um, as you've been told already, we will be discussing fear and um, talking about how we can overcome our fear through Jesus Christ. Um, we'll be talking about some stories from the Bible that discuss characters who have experienced fear in their lives. And we'll be talking about how Jesus has been in the midst of each one of these situations. So I am really hoping that we use the chat um, just to, to speak, to respond, to add anything to this um, word, which I'm gonna hopefully bring to us at this time. Um, without any further ado, let us pray to begin. Dear Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for the time we're going to spend here um, reading your word and learning more about what you'd like to, to tell us about fear. I pray that you will use me and that you will be with those who are listening so that they can gain something important from this message that they can bring forward throughout the rest of their week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so the first thing I just said to everyone that I really hope we use our our chat section for this evening's program. So I want us to write in that section or you can just shout it out and then mute yourself again once you finish saying something. Um, I'd like to hear what are some of our fears whilst you guys are doing that I'll, I'll talk on. You know, um, there are millions of people in this country, I think around 65 to 70 million people now in the United Kingdom. And almost, I'm pretty sure every single one of us has a fear. Maybe it's the fear of a spider. Maybe it's the fear of missing out on, um, on um, excitement. Maybe it's the fear of um, losing something valuable to you, please write in the group, in the meeting chat area, if you would like to share what your fear is. Um, but if not, we all have fears and how we deal with our fears is very important because it, it kind of dictates where we go with our lives, what we do with ourselves and what type of person we're going to be. Um, if we allow our fears to control us, we may shelter away, we may miss out on opportunity, but, but if we know that we have a God who goes through the storms with us, goes through the fears and the, the troubles of this life that we face with us, we can overcome any challenge that may be in front of us. And the first text I want to, to move us forward to, oh, we have some messages here on YouTube, thank you. So we have um, a fear of failure as one of our fears. That, thank you very much for that suggestion. Please continue to send through your suggestions of fears. But whilst that's coming through, I'm going to move on and we're gonna discuss um, some of the fears that you, that you can relate to this text here um, in the gospel. This is in Matthew chapter eight. Matthew chapter 8, and Jesus is talking to um, the, the disciples in this section from verse 18 to 22. He talks about the cost of following Jesus. He talks about how um, foxes have dens and birds have nests. The son of man has no place to lay his head. Um, another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead you know it's talking about the fact that we have to forsake the life that we we want for ourselves our own ambitions our own um things that fill us with pride so that we can have a closer relationship with god and that might fill us with fear because in the world that we're living in that can lead to rejection that can lead to us um feeling as if we don't belong feeling lonely um, feeling persecuted in some situations, in some places in our life, we we may start to feel these negative emotions. And as a result, that may bring through some fear in our lives, just like Matthew chapter eight was discussing there. It, it's really interesting that that section from verse 18 to 22 may bring about fear, but Jesus calms the fear as we move on to verse 23 to 27 in this same chapter. 
Verse 23 says to us, Then he got into a boat and the disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So in this chapter, you, you can experience the fears um, the anxieties, the worries that may come with this life that we're living in, this world that we're living in, with its many issues, with its many problems. But then it goes on to talk about the storm which the disciples and Jesus went through in this time, and Jesus was sleeping. And um, how do we react? How would we react if in our lives, you know, we're going through a struggle, we're going through a situation where we feel there's no way of getting out of it. If they jump out the boat, they're going to drown. There's nowhere for them to go. And it seems like everyone around them in this boat is going through the struggle. Maybe that's how you feel. You have no one to turn to because everybody's got their own struggle, right? But thanks be to God that these disciples, they went and woke him in verse 25 saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And, and thankfully, despite their little faith in verse 26, Jesus was in the boat with them. So they didn't have to worry because they knew that they were with the Savior. They were with the Master. In your storm as well, you don't have to worry about the fact that you feel lonely. You don't have to worry about the fact that no one else is there for you to, to support you through. You don't need to, to cling on to other things or external things hoping to get you out of your storm. Because know that Jesus, whilst he is, he may have been sleeping there. You, you might not hear him all the time. He is there with you in the storm, regardless of answer or unanswered prayer. Jesus' side of the bargain is paid. He has already died for you and me on the cross. That will never change. It's up to us to accept his sacrifice and the relationship that he wants us to have with him so that we can overcome these fears, so that we can have the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. So let's move on now to talk about some types of fear that you may have. You know, I want to break down fear into three sections. We're going to talk about um, how fear can make us run away. We're going to talk about how fear can make you doubt and how fear can make you lash out. And we're going to talk about how within all of these situations, Jesus is there and, and there's a way which we can overcome these fears. The first place we're going to go to is um in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 is a, a common story to us as Christians, to non-Christians, because this talks about the fall of man. And it mentions how um, these two first human beings came into who came into contact with Jesus on a, a personal basis, who knew him, um, came to a situation where they fell from their position from their relationship with him and as a result of their fear they hid themselves from him i'm just gonna quickly paraphrase the story you know the story already um and and what happened was as a result of the snake telling them that the words that that they had been told from god were were twisted or and untrue they ate from the fruit hoping to to gain some some new knowledge some new information a new experience and that experience suddenly separated them from god in an instant they were separated from god and as a result of their fear in verse 8 it says to us of genesis chapter 3 and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9, and it says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree 
whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat. So the story carries on. They have the conversation with, with Jesus. They have the conversation with God. They are clothed in, in, um, in the skin of an animal. And um, as a result, we are here today in the situation we are in. But I want us to really think about the, the decision they made as a result of their fear. They heard the voice of, of Jesus. They heard the voice of God walking in the garden and they hid themselves because they knew what they had done was wrong. They knew that they'd gone against God's commands. And for us now, um, how do we respond when we make mistakes in our own individual lives? Do we hide ourselves from God? Do we run away and say, you know, what? I am not perfect. There's no way back from this decision I've made in my individual life. I've done the same thing I said I was not going to do five minutes ago. How do we respond in that situation? Do we say, you know what, I'm worthless, I'm naked, so I'm going to hide myself from God. I'm going to try and solve the situation myself by covering myself in leaves, by covering myself in my sorrows, by crying, by looking to drink, by looking to drugs, by looking to, to um, avoid church people because when I see them, I'm going to feel unworthy of coming to church. I'm going to feel like this isn't a place that I, I should be in. People like me need to be baptized four times in a row. So I'm going to stay away from church because when I see Christ or when I see God, I, I think about myself. How do we respond when we have that fear that turns us to running away? Because what's so interesting about this is, Jesus's response to them it says to them here after Adam has said that he's naked the Lord said who told thee that thou wast naked who told you that you were you don't deserve the sacrifice that God has given you because it wasn't God who told you that who was it that told you that that you've gone so far that you cannot be saved you know it doesn't matter how many times we fall it's all about making sure that we renew that relationship with God, that we, we, we repent of our sins and we don't just stay in the mire, stay in the mud in, in our situation. God is always willing and ready to, to reach out to us as long as we do not put these things on ourselves. We need to trust in the word of God and know that he said he will never leave us or forsake us. And if we hold that promise in our hearts, we do not need to have fear of failure fear of falling below God's standard. We just need to hold our faith and look onto Jesus because sinless is he. He's the one that will make the changes in our life. Once we keep our faith on him, we'll be able to overcome these things rather than running away from them. What I really love about this text here is that Jesus came to them. It says that the Lord, they heard his voice in the garden and that's when they hid. We don't need to think that we need to do a million things to get to God. Because we could be doing these things and still not hold that faith that that leads us into the kingdom, that leads us into relationship with him. We need to make sure that we have our focus on Christ first. And when we have that faith in what he's already done for us, the actions will follow afterwards. So don't be dismayed by what you've done. Just make sure that we have our focus on God and know that he hasn't left us. He's always searching. He's always reaching out to me and you to make um, himself available to us. We just need to make sure that we don't forget he hasn't left us. So that's the first thing there. So we've, we've talked a lot about running away. Let's talk about doubt. Because there was a lot of doubt in that situation there. They doubted whether what God had told them was really true. Let's talk about doubt because not only can we doubt the word of God sometimes, maybe we have doubts within ourselves. Like we've mentioned earlier, we've doubted whether we are worthy. And um, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 talks about this. When Isaiah was being called into his ministry, he was afraid and he said, woe unto me. I am ruined for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Don't be afraid to do things for God, even when you feel unworthy. 
because God uses the most unlikely people to in the most unlikely circumstances to do the most unlikely things possible don't be afraid to to work for God when you feel like you you don't belong in this space God can use any of us and if we don't carry his word forward the Bible tells us that the rocks will cry out so let us be empowered by God and not be empowered by our own feelings of confidence or, or, or certainty because these things come and go and if it was for Isaiah's fears he would have never been able to do the things that he did in his life we wouldn't be reading his his um words today um what I, I find so interesting about this is just like in the story of Adam and Eve it's not the human being who goes to God um with their acts of goodness or their their um their works it's not us as the human being who can make any change in in the mind of God or to change how he feels about you and me what happens as a result of of Isaiah showing his fear is in verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 6 one of the seraphim flew to me this is Isaiah speaking with a live coal in his hand which he had taken with tongs from the altar with it he touched my mouth and said see that it has touched your lips your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for then i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us and i said here i am send me like we've discussed already that that faith in jesus christ is what we need to empower us to overcome our doubts of ourselves, our doubts of worthiness whether that be that we can live a Christ-like life or whether that be that we can bring the, the truth of salvation, the gospel to other people. Let us remember that Christ is always trying to reach out to us. And if we, through prayer and, and meditation upon God's word, could see how he wants to use us, hopefully when we look to, to how Jesus has said, just like he says in verse six here, your sin is atoned for, we will say, here I am, just like Isaiah, Lord, send me. Let us not be afraid to go where God calls us to go, but let us trust that he has a plan for our lives, that, that we can do things beyond our wildest imagination so that others can come to the knowledge of Christ and have the peace that we have that passes all understanding. So finally, I want to move on to the third um, section that I feel fear can affect us in and that is it can cause us to lash out one story is um of Peter someone who lived his whole life for a large part of his life around Jesus and after Jesus's death people were were calling for the disciples and they were calling out specifically Peter and he denied Christ until the cock crow crowed three times and, and if you read through that story in the New Testament, he was so adamant that he was not a follower of Christ because of his fear of what other people would think or of what other people would do to him as a result of his decision to follow Christ. Let us not think about the impact of what other people might have on us, but to focus on Jesus. And I want us to tie this now to another story um, in the Old Testament again. We're going to go to Numbers chapter 13, verse, verses 27 is where we're going to start. And we're going to end in Numbers chapter 14. So turn your Bibles, if you can, with me to Numbers chapter 13 and Numbers chapter 14. That's where we're going now. Numbers chapter 13 says to us, it's talking about um, when the Israelites were planning to go across Canaan they were going to go into the promised land at this point now and so some spies have been sent into the land to look at the land to survey the land to to identify whether it is a place which they should be going into and what the people living there are like now the spies have gone in they've come back and they've given good report of the place itself but then out of their fear, they told the rest of the Israelites, those assembled, that they saw 
Nephilim, they saw giants, they saw um, a terrible people that they would not be able to conquer. And we're going to read through the impact of their words upon the people here. It says in verse 27 of Numbers chapter 13, and they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. This is the fruit of it. Never, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now, Anak, it's talking about people who are giants, people who they should be afraid of. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. But the men that went up with them said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. So we were in their sight. Now, in verse four, in um, chapter 14, which we're going to continue into, the children of Israel begin mourning and complaining as they do. They begin to, to complain that oh, it, should have, it was better for us to stay in the bondage of Israel. It was better for me to stay in my sin than to come here because now I'm struggling with it whilst I was enjoying doing that wrong thing, even though I knew it was wrong. Yeah, oh, I should have just stayed low in my position, low in my mood, low in whatever it was that was controlling my life because now I have to face it. Um, it's too much for me. See, this is what fear does. It makes us focus all on me all on what I can do and of course just like the people they will feel like grasshoppers they will feel like like there are giants you may feel like things in your life are, are unbearable because we are focusing on us and look at the impact that this had here on God and what Moses decided to do in Numbers chapter 14 reading from verse 11 after the people have complained it says and the lord said unto moses how long will this people provoke me and how long will it be um ere they believe me for all the signs which i have showed among them i will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and a mightier than they and moses said unto the lord then the egyptian egyptians shall hear it for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by day and by a cloud, uh, by day in a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. Now I beseech thee, let the power of the Lord be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. What an interesting situation this is. The children of Israel are afraid of going into the future because of what has happened to them in the past. So they 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 are stuck here in the present, 
thinking about the past, thinking about the, the, the future based on the report that has happened to them. They're afraid. They've forgotten about what happened to them in the past, their relationship with God, the mighty things that God has done for them to bring them to this point. Um, and as a result of that, they're afraid of going into the future. They're stuck. And their complaints and their fear rises up. And God says to Moses, after all I've done for them, maybe it's time that we I reject these people. I disinherit them from the inheritance that I, I promised them. And Moses in this time, he stands up and he intercedes for the people. He stands up and says, Lord, look at what you've done for them. As a result, the Egyptians now know who you are. They know of your works. They've experienced it. And you're telling me that if that by doing this, this is the right decision to get rid of them. The Egyptians, as a result of what you're saying, will laugh. They will mock and say their God just brought them into the wilderness to die. This is important for us to recognize that in your situation, you have a testimony that somebody else may be watching. Somebody else may be gaining from the trouble you're going through. Somebody else may be, be um, looking at you as a testimony. You might be the only Jesus that somebody sees in their life. It's really important for us to recognize this. There's a story that goes well with this. A man, um, he was leaving a bookstore owned by an atheist friend of his. And the Holy Spirit told him to go back into that into that bookstore and invite him to church over over the Easter period he didn't know why because he knew the response he was going to get from his friend being an atheist he went in encouraged him to come to church he told him you know I feel strongly that the Lord has asked me to come here and speak to you and he was mocked he was ridiculed by his friend and told to go away you know I don't believe this blah 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 why are you coming to talk to me and you know that, uh, that um, weekend now when they went to church, they weren't um, Adventists. They went to church and the, the man was speaking on stage who had, who had invited his friend to church. And at the end of the program, another man and his family came up to him in tears saying, you know, the only reason I'm here is because you went into that bookstore. You see, I was behind a bookshelf cleaning one of the bookshelves, which you, you couldn't see me, but I could see you. And as a result of the things you said to that man, I felt the Holy Spirit urging me, who did not believe, to come to church on this day. And me and my family want to give our lives to Christ. What a testimony that is. You don't know how your life is impacting somebody else. The decisions that we make for God, they're not in vain. You don't know who's looking at you. You may not see the impact you're having. You may not see how you praying when your family members don't accept God in their life or that, that, that person you work with that you've been encouraging Christ is ridiculing you every day. You don't see the impact that that might be having on somebody else, but God is working through you. And that's why it's so important for us not to allow our fears to overcome us. So let's go back to this story as we close now. Because just like Moses was interceding for the people here, Jesus intercedes for us. It tells us that he is our high priest in the Bible. Um, we're told in Hebrews that he intercedes at the right hand of the Father. So we don't need to worry because Jesus, that same Jesus who was with the disciples in their storm, that same Jesus who was speaking to Adam and Eve in the garden, who went to find them, that same Jesus who's, who sent the angel um, to touch the lips of Isaiah, he is speaking to you and me in our lives. And he wants us to overcome our fears by accepting that he died on the cross for our sins. So let us make sure that we hold fast to the profession of our faith. Um, let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for his whole, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Um, Psalms chapter 112 verse 1 says, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. In our world today, we know that men's hearts are failing them for fear. 
But if we have that that positive fear of the Lord through a relationship with him, through recognizing what he's done for us, what he continues to do for us, we can overcome any situation in our lives. So I encourage us at this time to hold fast till he comes and that we will continue to look to Jesus to be our, the author and the finisher of our faith. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope that as we go into this prayer section, that we will not be fearful, but we will trust in the Lord because he will make a way.